It's a top Tuesday here on the podcast. Do you know what that means? We're going to talk about the top three reasons why I hate the Missouri Tigers. This is the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Today's podcast is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the car parts you'll ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them that Locked On Razorbacks sent you. So hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday. Um, I still have the roofers going on next door, so that's fun. I uh, love the sound of nail guns in the morning. Um, I also have some other stuff going on over here. Like, I don't know. It's like a war zone over here where I live. So if you have any background noise, I apologize. But, hey, that's kind of the the perks of living in Little Rock, am I right? But either way, it's a top Tuesday. And, you know, when we when I think about what to do for these shows and these particular segments, I'm like, all right, so what's something that I think would be kind of fun that some people would want to hear about and also something that might be actually – you know, like relevant to talk about. Well, since the Arkansas Razorbacks take on Missouri tonight in basketball, uh, I thought that it was a, a perfect opportunity to kind of break that part of it all down. Now, I could have sat here and talked about the game and previewing it and sitting there about, well, let's let's look at the stat lines and let's uh let's break down the 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 rebounds percentages and like I could have done that, but um that doesn't sound very fun to me. <laughs> so what sounds fun is talking about the top three reasons why I hate in Missouri. Now, before I get into these, let me just say this first and foremost. To you Missouri fans watching this, because I know you're probably going to find it, you're going to go in the comment section, you're going to talk about everything from my my appearance to my family and all those things and make fun of me for that too. Let's just know that, hey, it's just for fun. It's trash talk. It's the SEC. If you can't handle a little trash talk, you need to get out of this conference. And uh, second off, uh, for those of you who are going to say, man, you're, you're paying too much attention to Missouri. You're going to, going to start feeling entitled and they're going to think that you actually, you know, you're living, oh, you're living in their head rent free. This is how I feel. I hate, like I could do this about every team in this conference. And in fact, I want to do it about every team in the conference, especially the ones that Arkansas plays the most. So maybe this is something I do, uh, maybe during the summertime or something like that, where I go through all the teams because I have reasons to hate all the teams. So don't don't think you're special, Missouri. Like this, this is just happened to be good timing for it all too. So we'll get that out of the way first and foremost. So let's go ahead and get into the top three reasons why I hate, my opinion, the Missouri Tigers. Number one, culture. The culture. You know, when Missouri joined the SEC back, I guess in what was it, 2013, 2014, something like that. I was not happy. <laughs> like AM joining, I wasn't too happy about either, but I'm like, okay, well, AM, you know, it's they're wanting to get out. They they provide a lot of money. They provide, they have a huge fan base. It's like there's elements to them to where even though I don't like them, monetarily speaking, that they can add in a lot of benefits to being a part of the SEC. Again, I don't like them, but they can add that. Missouri was the one where I'm like, ew. Why? Why? They, like they don't even add money. Like they don't. But everyone's like, "Oh well, they they get the St. Louis television market." Well, whoop de do. Like who cares about that? So I wasn't happy when they joined the conference in the first place. But as much as I still think A and M is weird and all those things, Missouri to me was never a team that really fit in culturally with the SEC. Now, I'm not saying that they necessarily don't belong in the SEC, although some could make that argument. I just feel like there are parts of them to where it's like, you feel they feel more like a Big Ten team. That's really what I'm getting at. They feel like a team that in a school that fits in so much better with the Big Ten because, for instance, if you go to a Razorback game or you go to a Alabama game or an Auburn game or Georgia game or, you know, LSU game even. Like, if you go around to those stadiums, I feel like a lot of people are, are wearing polo shirts, you know? A lot of people are wearing, uh, you know, button-ups, you know, dressing nice for the occasion, if you will. 
Not saying everybody, because there's definitely some that don't. Some people will be lucky to wear a shirt. But for the majority, you kind of see it as almost like a, a classy Southern event in its own terms. But at Missouri, it's like every time I see the, whenever I do actually get to see the crowd, because the stadium is so terrible and where the camera work is at in football, it's like everyone's wearing jerseys and hoodies. And now listen, I've worn, I wear, I wear jerseys. I wore jerseys on this podcast before. It's fun. I don't wear hoodies often, but I do have a hoodie. It's a 1037 The Buzz hoodie. It's pretty nice. I'll wear it when I'm out and about. That's fine. But I'm not going to wear, uh, you know, a hoodie to a football game. And I did wear a jersey this past year, too. And I wore it because it's a good luck charm. And maybe that's a little bit of it, too. And I, maybe I'm making too big a deal of out of the outfits that I'm wearing. But my, my point is, is that I just don't feel like it's ever a Southern fun event. Like, it's just not a... It's not something that people are dressing up to. It's more just everyone's kind of just casually going to. And I feel like that's more of a Big Ten thing. That's just something I have I've taken away from it, too. So, but too much on the clothing. The other part of it, too, is just the the the, the feeling, the, the city. It's so, like, remote. It's so kind of out in its own way. And there's no, like, charm to it about Columbia. Uh, there's nothing about in that in the people, in the, in the way that they embrace the the trash talk and embrace the the pride and everything that goes along with it. It's, it's just not there. It seems so outside of the realm of the SEC from the footprint of what it normally is. And it's just such a odd thing. And if you've ever run into Missouri fan, which I have, and it's not a side on every people because I, there's people I'm friends with that went to Missouri. So this is not just a slide on every Missouri fan, but you can even tell that they feel like they're in a position to where they're not really belonging anywhere. Like they never felt like they really belonged in the big 12. They don't feel like they really belong in the sec, although they want to keep crowing and try to say, Hey, remember us, we're over here. Let us say some stupid stuff so you can re recognize us and acknowledge us. Like th there's that element to it, but it's like, again, I think they'd be better off in the big 10, but even in the big 10, because it's such a, historic conference like they would be swallowed up and spit out and and looked down upon or whatever by the by the big dogs like ohio state michigan and all that just same with nebraska and what they're going through right now so um that's kind of the thing about missouri is they don't really belong anywhere necessarily they've they're in the sec and they've had some times a little bit success in the sec since joining the conference uh very minor and we'll talk about that but still, it's just, I never felt like they actually fit in there. But they try. And there's nothing worse. I don't know about y'all, but there's nothing worse than someone trying to be someone that they're not. Like, that's one of my biggest pet, pet, pet peeves. Like, you know what? If, if you are not a musician, don't try to act like you're a musician. If you're not an artist, don't try to act like you're, you're an artist. You know, if, if you're, a, if you're, you know, somebody from... Fayetteville, Arkansas, like me, I'm not going to try try to act like I'm a big Southern boy. It's just not it. It's just like, I, I can't do that. I couldn't even try, even if I wanted to pretend I couldn't pull it off. And that's kind of what I feel like with Missouri. It's like, you're trying, like you, you're a part of it. Like you're in this footprint of the SEC and you want to be a part of it, but everyone sees through the charade where it's like, no, you're, you're not. Stop. You're, you're not, you're not that. Like, you're not really the SEC level. And, that, and that's just not a Missouri thing. Like, even AM's a little bit of that, too. You know, I can't really say anything about Vanderbilt. But, I mean, I mean, they're not the only school that's like that. But they're definitely one of the ones that tries the hardest but falls and fails the most at it. So, I just never felt like culturally they'll be there. Now, maybe one day down the road they will be. But I, I think that at least, again, my opinion, my perspective, from the outsider's perspective looking in, I feel like they're just always going to be that team and that school that, yeah, you're here. Yeah, you you do things. You're you're in the conference. You play these games. But you're kind of like the late addition, you know. Uh, you know, we had we had a team. We had a squad of uh, of 12. And we needed to add two more people in because it was required. And you were just the only one that was available, willing to hop on board. Um. It's how it's always going to be looked at to me. So I just don't think that they culturally belong in the SEC, even though they try really hard. When they try really hard, it makes it so cringy. If you need any evidence of that, go look at that music video that they made when they joined the SEC. Lord. Hey, football might be over this season. 
The basketball is in full steam and for both pro and college hoops. So for the latest odds, totals, player performance props, and where to find the next fired coach and where he's going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your source for hockey, boxing, UFC, and odds, and right down to your Olympic coverage and information. So head to the website today and use promo code, and or excuse me, you head to the website today and use the mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions where you can head and check out betonline.net where the game starts. <laughs> Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with the top three reasons why I hate the Missouri Tigers. Number two, the little man syndrome coaches. (laughs) Now, coaches, personality wise, they're going to be different no matter where you go. Uh, I think that there's people, for instance, that probably hate Eric Musselman because they feel like he's, you know, his personality isn't fitting. He, he maybe has like people I've even been told, yeah, he's got little man syndrome and all that stuff. Like every coach is going to be different, but as long as they breed success to go along with it, that's the key. But Missouri over the past, really since they joined the SEC, have had a few coaches that have had the the biggest like little man syndrome feeling to them that I've ever seen. And one of them is a football and one of them is a basketball. And we'll talk about that. And we'll start with the, the basketball ones. He's not there anymore. But Frank Haith, you know, have faith in Haith and whatever they tried to say over there. A guy that was literally getting fired from Miami. And after Mike Anderson left for Arkansas, because he realized, because Mike Anderson knew that Arkansas was a better job than Missouri. Um, he left for Arkansas and they were like, oh, who do we hire? Well, let's go get Frank Haith, who's about to be fired at Miami. And Miami was like, uh sure here he is you can have him so they did and he was at missouri now he took over mike anderson's team and in his first year won 30 games and then they lost in the first round of the tournament to norfolk state which was awesome uh but you know when arkansas went up against missouri and in mike anderson's first couple years there frank haith always just wanted to make a point to beat mike anderson like he tried to you know bow up on him and go after him and try to fight him uh, when uh, Arkansas was on the road up there in Columbia, which was the funniest thing ever, because he just run like Frank Haith just ran into the back of one of his coaches, like knowing he just wanted to be seen. I'm like, yeah, try that crap at Bud Walton Arena, buddy. Yeah, you weren't because Arkansas played him earlier that year. They didn't. He didn't try it then. He didn't try to bow up on him then. But when you're there with your home crowd behind you, you try to bow up and everyone's cheering for you. Yeah, yeah, okay. And and second off, listen. Was Mike Anderson the best basketball coach of all time? No. Was he a good basketball coach? Of course he was. But there is one thing that I'd probably take Mike Anderson in, and it is a physical fight. That dude keeps in shape. That dude doesn't mess around. And I feel like that if Frank Haith would have actually tried to go after Mike and actually tried to challenge him, Mike would have dropped him. I, I mean, I don't I don't think that he may have killed him. Like, he may have just thrown him like, a you know, a rough net door and just bam, like just dropped him to the ground. So I, I always remember that. And I'm like, what, what a tiny little man. Like, because that was the thing is Frank Haith looked like Carlton from, you know, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And he was never really a successful basketball coach. And he also had some uh, problems everywhere he went with allegations and all that stuff. I think he's still at Tulsa, actually. But either way, like he had such a little man syndrome that was like, dude, shut up. Like, I get that. Listen, if you're trying to motivate your own team and all that stuff, that's one thing. But trying to act like you're, you know, you're all tough and things and trying to act like you're going to go after Mike Anderson as a coach, like in a physical fight, get out of here. Uh, yeah, he got fired. So not really a surprise there. He was kind of the main culprit, but the, the biggest one now is the one that they currently have with the football program. That's Eli Drinkwitz. Now, Eli Drinkwitz was actually named that got thrown around with Arkansas, possibly hiring him uh, before they hired Sam Pittman. Now, I remember I was doing my previous radio show uh, when we were talking about the coaching search, and when that name came up, you know, there was people in Arkansas like, "Ooh, I like that name because he, you know, he has Arkansas connections, Gus Malzahn connections." I'm like, I don't want anyone with Gus Malzahn connections. I want to far away. Stop with the Gus Malzahn crap. Like it's over. <laughs> I don't want anybody with Malzahn connections. But of course, I got some people that were upset with me by that. But anyways, I'm glad they didn't hire him. I think we all are. But he goes to Missouri, 
And this guy, he, he, and you talk about dork vibes that he gives. Like it all started, I believe, when he was able to get a three star player uh, in his first recruiting class. And they had a video of him, like where he got the news that this like three star player that had like one other SEC offer committed to him. And he like started screaming into his phone, running around, high fiving everybody. And everyone's like, oh, what the energy that that guy brings. I'm like, okay. He's having to bring that energy probably because that's like the best that they're going to do in recruiting. Now they did do a better job in recruiting this year. But when I saw that, I was just like, what a dork, what a dweeb. So anyways, like I automatically had a bad feeling about it. But then he comes in and he talks about Arkansas where he's trying to do some rivalry stuff. I like, got, oh, yeah, that's that school in the South or the South of us or whatever. Like, Ooh, watch out. You know, get, put down the gloves. And uh, it was stuff too, where he was bringing up uh, recruiting now, he didn't like the way some some places and some programs were recruiting. I think one of them he was even referring to was Arkansas because they flipped the kid that was good, trying to go to Missouri. And he was like complaining about how he's like, yeah, well, you know, we do things with integrity here. OK. And then get out of the SEC, buddy. So it was like that. And I think the worst thing about it is it's just gotten because he I, all he is, is he's a guy that's at Missouri who knows that he's not going to get talked about because no one gives two rips about Missouri. So in order to get talked about, he has to act an idiot and act a fool. And I, and I think the most ironic thing of it all was this past football season when Missouri beat Florida with Dan Mullen, who is a, just a lame duck coach. Everyone knew he was going to get fired. They beat him in overtime. And we all remember from the previous year when uh, Florida beat Missouri, uh, there was the brawl at the end of the game. And like Dan Mullen came dressed out as Darth Vader for the press conference because it was Halloween. And he's just, you know, he's kind of a clown as he is. But it was Halloween and all that. Well, anyways, Missouri wins. And then uh, Eli Drinkwitz, who, again, like Dan Mullen was fired. Like, it was a lame duck coach. I wouldn't even call it a good win for Missouri. They, they beat a lame duck coach. And then he goes in and to the press conference. And then as he leaves, he puts his hoodie on. And he has a lightsaber. And he says, like, may the force be with you as he walks away. Okay. That's total normal behavior for a head football coach of a Power 5 school. And then... People are like, okay, all right. So maybe he's getting after Dan Mullen. And then he says something else about how, uh, you know, I was always taught that, uh, uh, you know, you are, you I forgot what the exact quote was, but something about like, you know, jackassery breeds jackassery. I'm like, look in the mirror, dude. You just like put a hood on and a lightsaber. Like, you don't think that's a jackass move? Like, you don't think that that makes you look stupid, makes you look bad? Jackassery breeds jackassery. He was referring to Dan Mullen. I'm like, dude, you're, you need to be referring to yourself. Who does stupid stuff like that? Early Eli Drinkwitz. So I don't know. I, I think that I, he, he's done a good job in recruiting this past year. Um, but I don't think he's going to be a coach that does anything differently at Missouri that Barry Odom didn't do, which is another reason why I think Missouri was stupid when they fired Barry Odom. Uh, I'm glad they did, though, because Arkansas got to benefit that. Um, but I, I just I don't I think he's just a he's just a dork. And uh, the fact that he tries so hard to be like, this edgy, I think it was uh, some article got written at SEC Media Days. They're like, move over Lane Kiffin. Eli Drink, which is the bad boy of the conference. And I'm like, I just, I want to jump off a bridge when people start talking about that nonsense. So number two reason why I hate Missouri, they're little man syndrome coaches, particularly Frank Cave and Eli Drinkwitz. I got to tell you about Rock Auto, folks. You know, this episode's brought to you by it. Ever increasing numbers of makes and models, it's impossible for your local chain store to get the auto parts that you need in stock. So save time and money with Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, or even 100% more for the same parts at a chain store car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for 20 years. They have prices reliably low for every customer, and they have everything you need from brake parts to tail lamps to motor oil and even new carpet. So go and explore their website today by going to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck be sure to write locked on in the how did you hear about us box so that they know that we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the car parts you'll ever need at rockauto.com <laughs> daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, which I'm sure that uh, people are still ripping me into the comments about this whole uh, you know thing of why I hate Missouri. And uh, I appreciate all of you watching in. Just remember that. 
Uh, but then we, we've talked about the number three and the number two reasons. And the number one reason is probably one that you all feel is might be pretty obvious. But to me, it's the it's the lack of elite level play but the act of elite level fan base. And what I mean by that is that you got a fan base that acts like they are awesome, that Missouri is awesome, that Missouri is something special, that's something big time, that they do something so big and that they're awesome, but they have nothing to show for it really in any of the major sports. Now, I went to their website because I was curious. Like championships in sports, not, not conference titles or division titles, but around national championships in sports. When was the last team championship, team national championship that this team had won, this school had won? And at least according to their website, the last team championship was in 1965 where the men's track and field indoor team won the national championship. 1953 and 54, it looks like they won baseball. Some people have been, uh, at least to say that they possibly have won uh, and football as well. But according to this website, these are the ones that are recognized. Now, there's been some championships like singles the, from track and from wrestling and all those things that people have won. And I think that they even claim some football ones. But at least according to your website, uh, it's not uh, it's not there. So maybe it's got some dispute of the championships. But even if I let you claim, I think it was like 1954 when they claimed they won the championship. OK, so claim that. My thing is, is that when it comes to like particular SEC schools, there are anywhere but like there's like around 19 sports for each school and everything. Some titles mean more than others. Obviously, Bama's national titles in football probably mean more than most other titles when it comes to non-revenue generating sports and all that. But I feel like most schools in the SEC provide something. They provide that they're good in something or elite in something or championship caliber in something. All right. Like, you know, South Carolina, just throwing school out there. Football has been pretty meh. Basketball, oh, I've been to a Final Four recently, but ugh. the baseball championship caliber. Florida's been good in pretty much everything. Georgia just won a championship in football. You know, Tennessee, they're, they're mainly been football, and this 98 was recently. And, you know, they're kind of, they're not bad in anything, but they're not great in anything at least at this point in time. Vanderbilt, oh, everyone makes jokes about them. Got an elite baseball program. Mississippi State just won a national championship in baseball. Ole Miss is kind of the same thing, too, maybe in the same perspective. But Ole Miss is kind of the same way where they're they're pretty good in baseball, but not great, uh, at least not elite. And then in football, they've come around. Auburn, they've been really good in football, as we know. Basketball, pretty good this year, too. LSU, been pretty much good in uh, all three major sports as well. AM, say what you want about them, but they got the women's basketball national championships that they've been really good with. And they're kind of to that point, too. Like even Arkansas, Arkansas baseball is always good. Hopefully, they get that national title, that College World Series title. Foot basketball, won one in 94. One of the better basketball programs in the country. I already mentioned Kentucky. Like, so you just go through all the SEC schools track championships also for Arkansas. Can't forget those. Go through all the schools, they all have something. But what do you got, Missouri? What are you adding? Like, what, what, what are you, what are you putting in? I mean, is it bowling? Like, what, what do you give the SEC? Like, what's your thing to where, if you're, if you're sitting there in the, in the conference room with all fourteen schools in this conference, and you got the Greg Sankey sitting there, it's almost like a boss where he's going through and thinking about whether or not to make cuts to the, to the company. You know, we got to save some money here. And he, and it's almost like office space, you know, when they go over and they ask each person is like, what is it that you do here? You know, that way we can decide whether or not to cut you. You know that what all these schools are going to say, but Missouri, what do you say? You know, Alabama's well, they got national championships in football. Well, you're good. Arkansas. Well, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're up and on the up and up in football. We made it to the Elite Eight in basketball last year. Our baseball program's constantly making College World Series. Uh, College World Series uh, track. We got more national championships than anybody in the entire country. We have more triple crowns than everybody. Well, okay, I mean that works. That works. You know, so no. Missouri, what do you got? Ah, uh, well, um, it's funny you ask because we at Missouri, uh. 
you know, we have really gotten better at at uh, at things in, in sports, um, you know, a, a collective effort, really, where we're really we're really getting better, um, uh, you know, you know, um, um, you know, swimming and diving's coming along. We got we got a couple guys there that are, are really good. Uh, you know, Columbia is a beautiful city. Journalism school. Hey, we, we got some big time journalists, big J journalists coming out. So yeah, we're we're doing great. We're doing great. That's that's probably how we'd go for Missouri because you have nothing. You have nothing. You have nothing to point to. No banner to point to and say, "Ha, ah, take that SEC, take that Arkansas, take that A and M, take that LSU." Like you got nothing. You got nothing. So the fact that it, they they have this fan base that thinks that they've arrived and thinks that they're able to be in a position of trash talk like it just cracks me up it's like the only thing they ever point to is single games like with arkansas football you know they were pointing to the fact that arkansas lost to him so many times and you know why arkansas lost to you so many times because arkansas football was it was like the worst time in the history of razorback football and i'm sorry but if you're Missouri football and you're bragging about beating Arkansas when they were so bad that like nobody has ever seen a stretch of football be as bad as what they were back then, and that's what you're bragging about, well, we beat you then. Great. So did everybody else. Like, is that all you got? You can't point to just games and scores and be like, hey, hey, hey we beat you then. You got to do something, Missouri. Be great in something. Just give us one thing, one thing that you're to lead in and that you can point to and say, hey, we got uh, we got bowling or we got equestrian, whatever it is you guys do. Find something. So that way, when the year in review comes up, Greg Sankey's not going to have to say, what is it that you do here? What is it that you give us? Because at the end of the day, you're in the SEC. At the end of the day, you're, you're still making those, getting those checks for 50 plus million dollars. You're getting those checks. How about for once you actually earn it and do something? And that's why I hate you. It's because you seem to benefit, be able to benefit from all the financial parts of being in this conference, but yet you don't add anything. Sad, really. Sad. Maybe one day, maybe one day you'll be able to brag, but until then, I hate you. And those are the top three reasons as to why. Appreciate everybody listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see.